Life in Louisiana has always been a blend of the people and the land. And today, the music is best told in the music of Cane River. Yeah, we been had a train and he put it on the track. He run it to the Lord knows where. And it's all on in me, it's all on in my. I define Creole music as just about anything that will get up and make you dance, you know. I mean, it's just a mixture of things, you know. Uh, you can hear some blues, blues in it, you know. Of course, everything came from the blues. Um, but I think it's more about that accordion, that scrub board, you know, the banjo, the fiddles. From the beginning, people went to the dance halls, the house parties, and the juke joints to socialize and relax after a long week. The sense of community that was so important at the turn of the century is still felt on Cane River today. A little different style of blues. This is one that I heard from Reverend Gary Davis. And he said that he first heard this in 1908. <laughs> Talk to angels how to do the jelly roll. How long, how long must I wait? Can I get you now, honey? Ooh, must I hesitate? A nickel is a nickel and a dime is a dime. And a house full of children. Lord, I don't believe now one of them. How long? How long must I wait? Can I get you now, honey, or must I hesitate? Yeah. Elvin Shields, who grew up on Oakland Plantation, believes the music scene was a much needed good time. The story of the plantation, that was the one thing that we had that was not impeded at any time. You get an old guitar, you get a harp, you get a fiddle, and as long as you were doing things like praying and having Bible studies and doing things that were not threatening, it was very exciting. Everybody liked it from slavery through to date. It's a calming effect on everybody. So if you are playing a fiddler, or you're playing a harp, and you're having a dance, and you're having something in a pot cooking, there's less chance you're gonna run off, right? So that was the calming effect of living on the plantation. It was the only thing we had as a good time. When you're having the gumbo, the fish fry, that kind of thing's around the plantation. That was when you had to get tarred, the horns, and all that stuff. But this is it. This is the kind of music that you had. The soothing blues, uh, rhythm and blues, and you throw in some gospel. I was in juke joints at around 13 years old. Long boys, you know, you would sneak out and you would head down to the juke joint and you'd be peeping in through the window and there was everything going on, all the activity. One of the most notorious juke joints we had, it's still sitting, it's called Bub Buzz, down Melrose, just past the old St. Matthew's School. It's called Bub Buzz, it's still there. And that was a true juke joint. You had bands such as this would come in from Winfield, they would come in from Nagadish, they would come in from Shreveport. And back early in the day, you would have guys like B.B. King, uh, you would have guys like uh, Albert King, 
you would have a lot of these guys that would show up at Bub Bub and they would play a set and then they would move on down to Alexandria, move on down to Lafayette. I mean, that's what these guys done. They were called, these were truly juke joints. Everything, and if you were 14 years old and you had 30 cents, you could buy a beer. Nobody was going to question it. The whole idea was that the beer had to be sold. So, you know, you're a young kid, you send somebody a little tall in to get the beer, and you're sitting there, you're 15 years old, and you're having a beer, and nobody's bothering you. But the jug joint was a lively thing, very, very lively. Music is very loud. The acoustic, forget that, you know, it was just loud, you know. <laughs> That's what it was all about, being loud. And people across the river would hear it, so they didn't even have to come to the jug joint. They could sit there and hear it until one or two o'clock at night, and then the sheriff come and shut it down. Songs of the Slaves greatly influenced writers and musicians who found an audience in the dance halls along the Cane River. First thing that I remember is, as a child was we weren't allowed in those places where where all of this great music was happening. That's the first thing I remember. But it, music did bring everyone together, regardless of social class, regardless of race, things like that. We would have people who would come all the way from the city proper to come down the river just for the music. And my dad was sort of a part of music all his life. What a lot of people don't realize is, is a lot of the performers who went on to make big names for themselves, the B.B. Kings, the Bobby mm. Boo Blands, uh, Tyrone Davis, all of those kinds of blues and, and R&B musicians, they actually passed through a lot of the clubs down Cane River Way uh, in Natchitoches, 6th Street. 6th Street was a big, hopping club area. So you could start at one end of, of 6th Street, which was Texas and 6th, right there at that corner. And that's where my mom lived before she even knew my dad. They lived right there. And my dad wrote a song called 6th Street Blues. And it's about how he met my mom walking up and down 6th Street when he first got out of the army. And he, he was a country boy and he considered my mom this city girl. And the thing at that time was on a Sunday evening after mass, you would, you would still be dressed in your church finery and you'd sit on the porch and you'd take in the evening. So people would be walking by and you'd say hello. And my dad talks about how he would go up and down 6th Street trying to get my mom's attention and she wasn't having any of it. So 6th Street Blues is actually about him trying to get my mom's attention. I, I can picture him now in a bedroom and he would be with that notebook binder open and he'd be he'd be writing and you know you could tell he was really concentrating and you know don't bother your dad um, while he was doing it and it was just always his thing that's that's what he did I I think he kind of I think he worked out a lot of his demons that way I think he worked out a lot of his demons that way um, life on the river 
during the 40s and the 50s was not always easy. It wasn't always easy. And he had done, he did two tours of Vietnam. So that also brought its own set of things to be dealt with. So I think he worked out a lot of his demons when he was writing music and when he was singing and things like that. Um, there was a transition, if you will, from very informal um, playing at juke joints and things like that. And that's when my dad started going actually outside of Louisiana. So he traveled to Mississippi and Arkansas and Georgia and places like that to actually uh, play gigs there. And, and he also had to do that because he had the opportunity. He, he would, you know, play or, or intro for Bobby Blue Bland and for Tyrone Davis and people like that. And once again, your father's name? Well, they called him B.B. Major. Corn, bread, and butter beans, and you across the table, eating them beans and they love as long as I am able. Hold corn and cotton too, and when the day is over, ride the mule and cut the fool and love again all over. But as I said, even before I married in the Melrose area, I was playing music down there, and that was. Places like Kirkland Hall, which was a huge facility. And if you were, if you are somebody now as a black musician, you pass through those doors there. So it was not uncommon for B.B. King to be there two, three nights in a row and stay across the street at Kirkland House or something like that, or Bobby Bland or Fats Domino or Gladys Knight or all of these people, the Temptations were traveling in the area, and they would book them. I mean, they were upcoming stars. They're, so you could get them for food, a uh, place to sleep on their way to a next job, and a little money. And all up and down Louisiana in this area, like you said, we just had access to some place in the two or three miles down the road and everybody on weekend had some kind of live music. So that's that that's the way I remember it as a child. because uh, I'm from Paul Hatton and we had eight nightclubs in Paul Hatton, probably ten people uh, per club, but anyway. And people would come from all around and they had live music back. Yeah, it was a jumping place. And we were the only place that sold liquor. If you drove through there on a Saturday night, excuse me, if you drove through there on Saturday night just driving down Highway 1 on your way to somewhere, they would be, there would be cars and people lined up. You wouldn't know there might be people in the parish. Mm -hmm. And they'd be out there partying, visiting after working all week long. Yeah. And you'd think, how in the world can this be? And used to, you could drive back through Nack Natchitoches Parish in the, on the back roads and there would be in the middle of seem seem like in the middle of nowhere there would be some place that was just hopping you yeah. could tell it was hopping and people out there doing no telling what having a good time you know letting letting off steam for after working all week long out in the sun well i saw my baby walking down the street and man she looked so fine Every time she wear that little black dress, you know what's on my mind. I'm talking about a cornbread, cornbread. We had choir cornbread. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your cornbread. Corn the Creole culture influenced music from New Orleans to the Cane River area and worldwide. During my time here, uh, it was actually Kirkland, Kirk's Hall which was about a mile and a half on, th on this side of the river, uh, going north. And uh, now that was the night club for Creole people. It was all Creole. Now when I say Creole and blacks, I don't mean anything de derogatory about the blacks. You understand? 
-hmm. and the Creoles. Be, but that was a way of life in those days. You know, there was Creole communities, and they didn't what associate with the other communities in the area. It's because it was the same way with the, uh, with the nightclubs. You know, you had your white nightclubs, you had your Creole nightclubs, you had your black nightclubs. Like Baba here opened in the 19... Uh, early 50s probably and uh, now that was for uh, blacks mo all blacks you know but uh, wood ante was the hall that from the 1950s on until it closed where all the creole gathered uh, for dancing you know and camaraderie you know people come from out of town we'd all go People would come. People would come there, you know. I said, "Well, you can't come in, you know." And they said, "Well, why?" He said, "For Creole." He said, "Well, what's Creole?" He said, well, "Now I know you don't know." <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> I, I, it always puzzled me. I never knew why you wanted to give a dance on a Sunday night. You know, you know, you had to go to work on Monday, you know. But that's when you give a dance, you know. And the people, I guess, was already mad because they had to, you know. You're closing at 12 o'clock, you know, and we're just getting high or whatever. And so, <laughs> yeah, this, this is a bad day the next day, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, especially if you drink too much, you know, especially like it is, you know, it's 100 degrees and you have to go in the field. That wasn't a fun thing. I swore many times I wouldn't drink again, you know. But I'd, I'd do it all over. I couldn't wait till the next weekend to start all over again. Because <laughs> the headache wore off, you know. <laughs> We started playing with those Lacou guys because then it was only two of them left. It was just you can do that was still playing at that time. And then Alan and I, we started playing music with them. They, they played just, just country music and they played a waltz and two steps and I, I didn't quite understand it until I, I started playing with them. Then it, was, it was easy, you know. And we, we, played, uh, we played music that to, to the friendly place that Woods Place when it opened. The tradition of music and dancing that Juke Joints provided offered a rich perspective from an artist's point of view. Local self-taught artist Clementine Hunter lived at Melrose Plantation within walking distance of several Juke Joints and dance halls. The people in the music inspired Clementine to paint what nightlife would have looked like on the river. Her canvases recreate images from a bygone time. Local historian and Hunter painting expert explains. The murals tell highlights about life on Cane River. There are scenes of cotton picking, wash days, funerals, wakes, all of the activities of life on Cane River, including a wonderful depiction of the honky tonk. And it's actually specific enough in this painting to know that it was the friendly place. It was also called Woods Hall. Um, this building actually exists, and we know it exists because there is a window fan in it at the end of the building, and there is the window fan in the mural. And this painting depicts, well, there's a jukebox playing music, there are people dancing, there are people fighting, there are people shooting, there are people out in the yard gambling, there are people out in the yard certainly drinking at this honky-tonk scene. This section of the mural really condenses into a small space the whole story of what happens at a honky-tonk on Cane River on Saturday night. Yes, Clementine went to the honky-tonks. Actually, there was one closer to our house than the Friendly Place. The Friendly Place was across the Cane River. Just down the road, you could probably hear it at night, was Babuzz. And Babuzz was quite an operation as well as the Friendly Place. These both existed until the 50s and 60s. Um, the interesting thing about Babuzz, besides being a Saturday night honky-tonk or honky-tonk in the night, on Sunday afternoons, they did horse racing across the road. And it was straight away, it was not paramutual, it was side bets. And I once, only once, and I regret now not stopping, they were out there on a Sunday afternoon having horse racing. Huge crowd, and of course the focus was getting drinks from Babuzz and going across the road to watch the straightaway uh, horse racing. Now, that was mostly at Babuzz, would you see? Clementine, everybody say that's a friendly place. There's Woodhall across the street. That's not Woodhall, Clementine probably had I'm, I would dare say she had never been over to Woods Hall. And when you see all those pictures, that's a fallacy about that's the friendly place across the way. 
The friendly place across the way, they've killed people there. One guy got killed there, I know. But, uh, but it wasn't like Babas, you understand, on this side of the river. Went to Kirk Lutz mm -hmm. <laughs> and Wood when he first opened up. Yeah, sure did. And we, Ali Jones used to play. Oh, who, who was that now? Ali Jones. Ali Jones. <laughs> yeah, he used to play yeah. at Wood a lot. Mm -hmm. So what did what what did he play? He played. He could play most anything. He played really? a French harp. Mm -hmm. He'd play a guitar. Mm -hmm. Good music too. Yeah. He'd make that French hop talk. Oh really? Mm -hmm. I remember one night we come in at two o'clock, but we was laughing on the front porch and we woke mom and daddy up. Children, what y'all doing here? Nothing, mama. How long y'all been home? Oh, we been home. We just been talking and laughing here about what went on. You know, it wasn't no shooting and no cutting it in them days. Yeah. They had house dances you'd go to and people that play the fiddle and the guitar. That was real good music. They didn't have no drums. You hardly ever seen a drum in somebody's house, you know. It was just like easy going in and out That's with it. a fiddle and a guitar. And we'd go, when we'd go, in the wagon out at Moore, that place they called Seeper, mm -hmm. long time ago. Mm -hmm. That's what you remember. You now, don't I, remember that. I can't Moore. believe y'all went way out to Seepers in a wagon. Oh that yes, is. we did I, too. No, no, I believe we'd go, it. We go to just it. about every Saturday night. Mm -hmm. But I'd go with my brother and his wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about shake that thing? Down in Georgia was the General King. He got a hump in his back from shaking that thing. Oh, shake that thing. And boy, they move. <laughs> they talk about us today. <laughs> A lot of French was spoken back then. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of, the, uh, a lot of people, we, we, we spoke a lot of French on the river. And as the thing came along, because I learned a lot of my French, their French, uh, I would call it a different French here, but then I studied French in Chicago, the Parisian French. So if these guys don't continue that kind of music, you know, we'll lose it. Of course, you know, people are recording it. We're realizing what's happening now as to where 20 years ago when we didn't have that kind of technology, you know, you would lose it. But I think it's safe to say that, you know, it'll be around long after I'm gone and everybody else is gone. That music will still be there. When I was young, I used to wait at 
at master's table, hand him plates. I'd pass the jar when he got dry and brush away that blue tail fly and scratching in the briar too. One day he rode around the farm The flies so numerous in a swarm One bit that pony on the thigh Lord the devil take that blue tail fly Him scratching in the briar too Pony yelled and jumped the pitch. He threw old master in a ditch. He died and the jury wondered why. But the devil in the blue tail fly and scratching in the briar too. Beneath the persimmon tree, his friends and family there to see. musical heritage of Cane River is still alive. Every May, Cane River Creole National Historical Park holds its annual Cane River Music Festival on the grounds of Oakland Plantation. For more information, visit www.nps.gov slash carry. Special thanks to the Cane River National Heritage Area. Nakitosh, Ilya Hembren, Mange la papa, autant qui je veux. Mon Nakitosh, Ilya Hembren, Mange la papa, autant qui je veux. Sur un beau dimanche, Mimi allait la wange, les troubés dans l'Himala. Sur un beau dimanche, Mimi allait avant, je l'ai trouvé Zori malade. Endormez-vous, sommeillez-vous, tous nos amours trompés par les. Endormez-vous, sommeillez-vous.